So there's Todd in his big vacuum truck. Wave to everybody, Todd. Okay, so today we are mm -hmm. <laughs> today we are cleaning out a lot of our wet wells around the plant. And um, there's one of them. This is a secondary uh, sedimentation. We're pulling all of our pumps for annual inspection, cleaning out the shallow wet wells with the uh, vacuum truck there. Um, so this is a really good opportunity to talk about motors. Uh, and I'm going to take you through measuring a motor and uh, doing uh, amperage checks. But for right now, let's get this thing vacuumed out and get these pumps pulled. Okay, so the lift station is empty for the most part. You can see there's some water entering in here. That is a back feed from that check valve right there. So that means I'm going to have to rebuild that or at least open it up and see what's going on, clean out the seals. Um, but that is the trickling you're seeing is back feeding. Um, when we get into valves, maybe I will um, break apart a check valve and, and uh, talk to you about that. So we're going to pull these pumps, but I kind of wanted you to see how this all kind of works. Um, that bracket, and I'll point it out to you when we pull the pump, uh, that bracket goes down these slide rails and there's a discharge pipe and there's a, there's a seal on that bracket um, that attaches to the discharge of the pump. And uh, that allows us to just literally just drop it down and uh, have it seat and we bump them and make sure that, uh, you know, they're not spraying water everywhere because oftentimes when you're pulling these, the wet well's full. This is an annual preventative maintenance job we're doing where we're going to inspect the uh, liner. It looks okay. Um, this part of the plant might actually be going away in the future, so we're, we're not looking to do huge major projects, but um, anything in here that might be uh, of urgent matter. But look, we'll pull these pumps here in a minute. But yeah, that's kind of what you're looking at. We got our chains here uh, to help us pull. This is an alarm float. So it's a signal that goes to our alarm company to call us. Um, the level transducer actually talks to SCADA and tells me the level, but if that were to fail, this is a backup. And then um, this is really just a package lift station. Um, so anyway, let's pull these pumps up. Okay, so we've got one of our pump and motor assemblies pulled up. I want to show you a couple things. First, there's a seal that comes in here. I actually don't have seal fail alarms on my uh, on this plant. So I, I come in and I check to make sure that um, the seal's in good shape and I look for a sheen or um, a slickness to see if any of the oil is starting to wick out and this uh, looks okay. Um, so if you looked at my last motor, pump motor video, you see there was a, the pump body or the motor body here and where it connects to the pump here and then the balloon sits right here. Um, this is that bracket where it'll go down the slide rail and you'll see there's there's a seal right here um, and uh, what it does is when, when it goes down to the discharge plumbing way down there you'll see there's a flange face right there it just mounts right on top of there and it makes a nice seal but we're going to check the shaft that make sure it spins by hand and that uh, the shaft isn't wiggling around or um, have any play in it uh, to make sure that the bearings are nice and tight um, and then uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, clean it out run some water through it and uh, put it back in service so we just reset the pumps in there everything's clean and functioning the pumps are in good shape um, i need to fill that wet well with water so what i'm going to do is turn off um, our recircul one of our recirculation pumps uh, that goes back to the trickling filter and to fill that with some uh, secondary water um, otherwise it will just take a long time to fill that with a hose and then we can test our pump We have enough water in here to make sure that uh, we can bump these. So what we're going to do is uh, why it's going to bump up and we're going to see if our check valve um, moves. So go ahead. Oh, there it goes. Woo. <laughs> so that's one. Okay. And then we're going to have them do the other one. Whoa, there it goes. Okay. All right. So we bumped both of them. That's a great way to check to make sure that your um, flow is actually going. Uh, it can be hard with all the turbulence down there to see that it's moving, but those check valve weights, uh, those arms moved, as you can see. So that's a great way to make sure that we know we have flow and we've uh, gotten our prime back. All right, and now it is time to do a little bit of an electrical checkup. What you're looking at here is a local disconnect I have locked out and tagged out. Um, it is for this Ibarra. It looks like a Gorman Rupp, but it's an Ibarra trash pump. Uh, we're going to test the insulation on this motor. Um, and after we do a little bit more of an electrical checkup on that, we'll do some other stuff. Uh, we'll go to the whiteboard and talk about uh, the different kinds of horsepower you're going to need to know about for your exam, as well as how that relates to cost. Um, but for now, what we're looking at is um, we're going to send a thousand volts through this motor. This is a 460 volt motor. We're going to send a thousand volts DC through here and we're going to test for leakage. And then the other thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to test for continuity across the phases to make sure it all looks 
pretty even, and then we're going to uh, do a full load amp test to make sure that it's within its um, specifications. All right, let's get to the mega test. Okay, I'm gonna do an insulation test on this motor, but before I go any further, I do want to uh, tell you, don't touch electricity unless you are uh, trained to do so. Um, the purpose of this video is to show you some of the things that go on in a plant and uh, help you pass a certification exam, okay? Um, so having said that, please be safe. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, send a thousand volts through this 460 volt motor. And the purpose of this test is uh, to see if there's any um, leaking, I guess is the best way you can put it, in the insulation of the conductor. So um, what that means is think about a leak in a, um, in a water pipe. At 30 PSI, a small leak is hard to find, but at 100 PSI, it's all gonna be a lot easier to find that. Same concept, okay? Um, so I have clamped my negative lead to the ground on the body of the motor. Um, and I'm actually gonna go from the, just for the sake of this, test these leads going down as well. Um, so really the best place to test just the motor is gonna be right here. Um, but I, I can test these conductors too. It's gonna tell me if there's a problem. Um, and if there is a problem, it's just more troubleshooting I have to do and that's fine. Okay, so I picked my uh, mega up off of the motor. Um, you don't wanna be touching it while you do the test in case there's a short and you become the path to ground, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give my equipment some space. I'm going to hit the insulation test button and we're going to hold this for anywhere between 60 seconds and um, 120 seconds. So right off the bat, it flashed 600 something meg ohms and we popped up to 0.7 gig ohms after that, which is, you know, good. And you see 1,055 volts down in the lower right hand corner of my screen. So I'm looking to make sure that um, my ohms aren't dropping. So I'm actually going higher, which is good. Um, and then the other thing I'm looking for is that my voltage is steady. It's not dropping either, okay? So that would be indicative of that leak. So uh, yeah, 0.9, we're climbing, this is good. I'm not gonna hold it for the full 60 to 120 seconds. This is just a demonstration, but yeah, that gives you a good idea of uh, what a mega ohm test looks like. And this, uh, this motor insulation is looking good. Okay, I'm gonna test the other two leads on my own without you, and uh, we'll move on to the next test. Okay, so I megged my other leads and they're fine. Um, typically, that's what I find is if one um, one lead is good, the others are too. So I'm gonna go ahead and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the phases going into the motor. And again, the power is off and I'm checking for um, some resistance, like lower level resistance. And what I'm looking for to make sure is all looks about the same. So I got 3.4 ohms there. Now I'm just gonna take this guy here. I'm gonna move over here and see where we got. And uh, 3.4, looking good. And then last, just take this guy here. Right there, and I've got 3.4, okay? Uh, I have detected issues in the past um, when I'm doing this, and it was like one ohm, one ohm, and then the other one flew all over the place, and it was 50 ohms, it was zero ohms, it was, yeah, that was starting to show me there was a, there was a problem with somewhere that I needed to flush out. So that's a pretty quick test, um, very easy, no big deal. Now we're gonna move on to a full load amp test. Okay, for this next test, I use my uh, trusty dusty Home Depot amp clamp. I don't run tons of high amperage here, so this works just fine for what I'm doing. Um, it's inductive, and so what you do is you just clamp around the lead there, um, and it's gonna tell you how many amps you're running. So I'm gonna run over and turn the pump on. Uh, this is on the other pump. Uh, and we actually have the power on because you have to have the power on for this. Be very careful when you're doing these. So anyway, uh, let me pull some amps on this uh, at full speed and see what we got. Okay, the pump is running. And so now I'm gonna clamp again, 3.6, 3.5 amps. Like one of the legs, get in here, grab you. 3.9, four amps. And then we're gonna grab you, 3.8. Okay, so here is our motor plate and um, it's showing me all the information I need. Um, I'm running 460 volts and 4.02 amps is full load amps. And I was at 3.9, I think we bumped against four and came down. Um, so we're good, we're within the FLA. And you see down here something called the service factor is 1.15 and that is multiply those amps by 1.15 and that is the maximum allowed amps um, that that motor can do before starting to burn up. And so we're well within the service factor um, and we're within our full load amps range. Um, I can hear that bearings making some noise. Uh, its neighbor um, pump has a bearing replacement on deck. Uh, maybe this one needs one too. So anyway, okay, let's go to the whiteboard and we will uh, start talking about horsepower. Okay, so welcome to the whiteboard segment, everybody. I do 
want to um, ask if you are getting anything out of this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and pass to your friends. Let's hope folks get certified. And the next whiteboard I'm going to do is on the Venturi effect. Um, I accidentally omitted that during the um, last pump video. I will 100% do just a standalone whiteboard on the Venturi effect because you will be asked about um, it. There's a lot of different Venturi items out there. <clears throat> and uh, the other thing I want to just also say is the motor and pump information I do on this series and these videos is uh, aimed at helping you pass your exam and a little bit of real world. For the most part, if you are an operator, you are not dealing with the pumps and motors on the level you see me dealing with them. Um, uh, I enjoy this work and I actually have the option to not do it. My manager, my general manager has offered for me not to have to do this stuff. I very much enjoy it. So that's why I do it. Um, larger plants, operations and maintenance and mechanical are different divisions altogether, okay? But you do need to know some stuff for your exam, okay? Um, one of them is uh, a, a couple little things here about three phase electricity, and you need to know a, a lot about horsepower because as you get into the higher levels, most plant managers are certified operators, and you need to know how to do a fit, you know pump efficiencies and um, operating costs. And by the way, the operating cost uh, for a pump math problem will be uh, available to you at the very end of this video. It'll pop up on your screen. Go check that out, and you're going to see how this is all kind of weaved together down here on horsepower. Okay, um, and by the way, if you're a pump expert or a motor expert and you uh, want to add to the conversation, please put it in the comments below. I think any input in the comments um, is helpful. Okay, so three-phase electricity. Uh, we're going to say that the two things that you need to really, that's probably going to come up on your exam, is phase balancing and swapping the legs to change rotation. So phase balancing, uh, what you might have just seen on my amperage, I had, this is another thing we checked. That's what, why we check all three legs is I had a 3.5 to 3.6 leg on my amps, I had a 3.8 and I had a 3.9 slash four. Well, when you average those together, there's a, there's a calculation for this. Um, there's a percentage differential that you really are allowed. And it's, you know, anything less than 10% differential is typically acceptable. Um, ideal is 5%. I think that's kind of hard in the real world to, to grab all the time. But, um, you know, if I'm over more than 10%, which actually that turned out to be, I think, 10.7% when I um, did the calculation, I should probably go test my connections. I should test the voltage coming in to make sure that, you know, there's nothing wrong on the utility side. Um, is my is my voltage even? Is my Are my connections tight? Things like that will um, help you make sure that your uh, phases are balanced because this is not just an efficiency thing. It's, a, it's hard on the motor when they're really out of balance, okay? But if you can get your efficiencies on your phases dialed in, you'll save a lot of money, especially in a huge plant, okay? So that's a big reason why you want phase balancing. It's a cost savings thing for power, and it's also um, easier on the motors when your phases are balanced. Um, swapping the legs to change rotation. So when you are putting a pump in service, there is a typically a rotation arrow um, that you pay attention to. It could be clockwise, it could be counterclockwise, um, but you check your rotation. And if the rotation is not the direction it's supposed to be, you swap any two legs and you're good. The rotation will change. Just double check that before you put it in service. Um, the other reason that you should know about being able to swap legs to change rotation is um, if you have a jammed pump, if you swap the legs, um, it will go the other direction and it might blow your obstruction out. Now, in my world, that makes no sense because if I were to do that with my smaller plant pumps, that obstruction would probably get sucked right back up <laughs> into the pump and I'm right back where I started and I just need to pull the pump. So my automatic response is pull pumps because my stuff is small enough to pull. But bigger plants, it's a lot more of a pain to go that route. So they, they do this. If you've ever had to do this to blow an obstruction out and it worked out for you, please put it in the comments below. Tell us your story. We'd love to hear about it. Okay, so that's really all I would say you need to know about three-phase electricity. Uh, distribution operators need to know way more about it than we do as wastewater folks. We are mostly going to be drilled on process. But the thing that you're really going to get hammered on, especially on your higher level exams, is horsepower. So there's three different horsepowers you need to know about. Water horsepower, brake horsepower, and motor horsepower. Water horsepower is the theoretical horsepower needed to move the water. It's the water at the it's the horsepower at the impellers. Okay, um, there's a math equation for this. I'm going to do each one of these in their own math video, or I might do, you know, I'll I'll see how it comes out. I might do one long math video breaking each equation out and showing how they work together. Um, brake horsepower is the horsepower delivered to the pump shaft. 
Okay, so there's a efficiency scrub here. Um, and then your motor horsepower is your input power, your input horsepower going into the um, motor itself. Okay, and there's efficiency scrub here. So you might hear your pump is 90% efficient and your motor is 90% efficient. So what they're talking about when your pump is 90% efficient, it's the scrub between your water and brake horsepower. And when your motor is 90% efficient, it's the scrub, the efficiency scrub between your brake and your motor horsepower. Okay. So um, just know that, and we're going to get into that a little bit more in the math problem, because you need to know when they're telling you your pump is efficient, your motor is efficient, what they're talking about. And I'll just repeat it one more time. When they tell you your pump efficiency, it's the efficiency difference between your water and brake horsepower. When they tell you your motor efficiency, it's the difference between your brake and your motor horsepower. They may only give you one number. They may say your pump is 80% efficient. Calculate your kilowatts. Um, that's the only one you need to use. You don't need to use, you don't need to look for the other one because I guess they're assuming there's a 100% efficiency theoretical somewhere in here. Um, but yeah, if you see only one efficiency given and you're doing a kilowatt calculation, that's the only one you need. If you see two, they tell you about a pump and a, and a motor efficiency, you need to use both of them, okay? And we'll, we'll do that math at a later time. I hope I'm not confusing you with that. Any questions, comment, please. Um, motor horsepower is greater or equal to the brake horsepower, which is greater or equal to the water horsepower. Motor is always the highest, that's your input, that's what's going into the motor, okay? Can't be higher than what's bring, being delivered by, um, by the utility or, or your controls or whatever it is that is controlling what, how much power you're getting. Your brake horsepower is always going to be greater or equal to your horse water horsepower and less than or equal to your motor horsepower. And your water horsepower will always be the lowest number or equal to brake horsepower. Um, some, uh, I might, I'm going to throw a little bit of number here at you. We're not going to work out any math, but one horsepower equals 0.746 kilowatts. Okay, so you need to know that number because when you get into kilowatt hours, um, you need to know how to do that. Now, kilowatt hours is not kilowatts. Um, that math video I told you about earlier, that's going to be linked at the end. Go check it out. I'll explain how kilowatt hours work in there relative to kilowatts. And then one horsepower is 33,000 foot pounds per minute. In essence, a dude figured out back in the steam engine era that, um, a horse, I, I don't know which horse, <laughs> but a horse oh, was able to pull 33,000 feet. I'm oh, sorry, not feet. I'm sorry. 33,000 pounds, one foot in one minute. That's what that means, okay? And then we get in, when we do the horsepower math, we're gonna get into how it relates to water, okay? There's a conversion factor. Okay, um, that's it. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll catch you in the next one.